Hello, good evening and welcome uh, to this special edition of Mac Mirror in Life. Uh, joining me as always is uh, my co-host, Rich McKean. Uh, good evening, Rich. And why is tonight special? Uh, well, good evening. Good evening, everyone. Thanks for everyone for joining us um, at this evening's special. We're joined by someone that you can see below us, uh, David Anderson. Anderson, a fifth generation uh, Cooper of the, this is why I'm going to, to struggle and perhaps David can pronounce it better than me, the Valolovs. Tunfabrik Cooperage, where we have our Swedish oak casks uh, made. And uh, so thanks, David. Uh, thanks for joining us. And perhaps you can correct the uh, the pronunciation of, of your company's hey. name there for me. Yeah. yeah. Hey, guys. Uh, thanks for inviting me. Um, it was pretty good. Vara loves Tunfabrik. Okay. Not too, I'll far, take off. Not yeah. too far off. I'll take that. I won't uh, attempt it again and get it worse. I'll just move on from that and uh, say that about it right. Yeah. <laughs> looks, looks like our lessons with Moa back in December are paying off, Rich. <laughs> yes. Sounds <laughs> like it. Yeah. So, David, uh, hello, my friend. Uh, thank you very much for joining us. Uh, I'm really quite excited for tonight. Uh, so, ladies and gents, before we get into some really cool information, I think it's only right uh, that we inter that we quickly introduce tonight's dram, really. Uh, and and for tonight's show, I think it only fitting for us since we're going to be talking about uh, wood. Uh, is we're going to we're going to be uh, our flagship single malt Svensk Yek uh, or Swedish Oak. So Svensk Yek has a spicy character, giving notes. Uh, of, uh, of sandalwood, dried ginger, uh, black pepper, roasted oak and herbs, the spicy aromas that come from the aging the casks in Swedish oak. Uh, are, uh, that, and that's complemented by fruity undertones with hints of vanilla, toffee, caramel and honey. Predominantly matured in 200 litre ex-bourbon casks. Then we take 10% of that liquid uh, uh, and put it into uh, Swedish oak for a minimum of 18 months. Um, and then we obviously marry it all back together and bottle it. So 10% uh, of, of the contents of each bottle of Svensk Yek uh, has been matured for 18 months in Swedish oak. Mm. It's got um, a, a different character to uh, American oak and other European oaks, I think. Um, spicy character, I think the notes that you said there, um, some of the sort of heavy notes mixed with a bit of sweetness, which I think why it works really well this kind of, that ex bourbon, most of it being from ex bourbon casks, ten percent for a small portion of time being in Swedish oak, just that right sort of balance, very small ratio. Having gone into Swedish oak, but that's all you need. That um, sandalwood for sure, dried uh, sort of dried ginger, pepper, black pepper in particular. Um, I think that, and, and for me, like dark chocolate, I always get a bit of dark chocolate. Which yeah. sort of, I associate with like you know bitter, darker flavours. And the herbaceous bit, but then mixed together with the sweetness. I think the, the notes you mentioned there, Mick, I tend to find, um, depending on what I've eaten that day, it can change, of course. But yeah. for the most part, yeah, the um, uh, I don't know, berries or the vanillas, vanillas, caramels, things that you'd expect to get from you know, bourbon casks, ex-bourbon casks. I think it matches as well. Um, I think well, David will tell us a little bit more about how casks and everything are made, but for everyone watching, our, our Swedish oak, um, the wood that we use comes from uh, southern Sweden. Uh, it's grown there for centuries, and the harsh conditions that you'd expect to find in uh, in Sweden harsh. We would see them as harsh, I suppose. David just sees them as you know the weather normal. <laughs> yeah, um, but that it, it helps. It helps those trees become I know very durable. You know, there's big, huge shifts in in you know in, in weather across the seasons as well. So, um, and then we get you know get those trees felled. They get handed off to someone like David. Um, and coopered and, uh, you know, by hand and heavily toasted uh, inside. Um, but we'll talk a bit more about that um, when we hand over to David and uh, learn from his expertise. Um, and, yeah, and, and us, MacMir, I think we're seeing as people always trying to strive and, and improve and move forward. And I think, you know, you've got an ancient craft of making whiskey. Same way for a cooperage, you've got this ancient craft. We've always got to think about how to improve things and where things can be better. And um, I think both of our organisations... Um, I've got that, you know, one eye on that at all times as well. So I think one example of ours you know, just would be um, using smaller casks, another way of combating the, the, the colder climates that you get in, in Sweden in particular and getting, um, you know, 30 litre casks, 128 litre casks, all sorts of different smaller sizes that you don't often see, or that you don't know, see them sometimes in Scotland, but not not half as much as we would use. No. Um, but I think that's quite a sort of innovative forward thinking. And you get more flavour, you get to extract more flavour bit more quickly from it as well um, exactly. so yeah, interested to hear what what we're gonna well, learn Definitely. today i just want to just want to point out i'm actually drinking my svenski this evening from my uh 
from my wooden goblet from my good friends at Little Brown Dog Spirits up in Aberdeenshire. So I've got an oaky whiskey with with an oaky cup. As well. Well. So I'm, I'm keeping really on point this evening. Right? So, so <laughs> but really, guys, on that note, we should really hear from our guest. You know, we've done enough talking. Uh, so, David, can you tell us a bit more about yourself uh, and what you do, please? Yeah, uh, I'm 38 years old, wife, two kids, and uh, I'm a cooper. Uh, that's uh, in Sweden. That's a very odd uh, craft. Uh, there are not not uh, many uh, coopers in Sweden, so. When somebody asks me what I do for a living, I say uh, I'm a cooper, and I always have to say it twice because they, <laughs> they don't understand. They have a, it's a lost it's a lost craft in, in Sweden. So yeah. uh, nobody, uh, not not uh, not the younger people, they don't know what it is really. So I have to always have to explain. But then they get interested. So um, I think it's it's really fun. <laughs> <laughs> How do you say um, cooper in in Swedish? What's the word? Tunbindar. Uh, uh, you, you have a go at that, Nick? Tunbinda. Yeah, very good. Tu, Tunbinda. Yeah. Yeah, nice. Well, you say that there's not many, or well, you know, sort of Cooper, uh, Coopering and Cooperage is not a big thing in Sweden. How did uh, Va Varilov's Tunfabrik you know, become what it is today? You know, where did you begin and what's happened? Well, uh, all the Cooperages uh, disappeared in the 60s um, by different... Uh, 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 and uh, I think my ancestors were uh, uh, very flexible. They, they began to, to fabricate uh, small furniture and, and other things just to survive uh, because they, they, they had to do something. Yeah, um, sure. And um, it survived because of that. And uh, that I, I'm very proud of that, just the flexibility that you can do, do what it takes to... to to survive, so um, that's that's why we're here today uh, uh, with this uh, uh, company. Uh, awesome, yeah. So, so obviously, so you know, you started off making furniture and things like that, and then obviously, there there was a need at that sort of time, just you know, over a hundred years ago, for, for making barrels. So I suppose started off like barrels and stuff like that for for wine and beer. I'd imagine. No, it wasn't. Uh, oh, okay. No, it started out with. Uh, our company started out with, um, um, we haven't had that history with distilleries in Sweden, so um, most of the cooperages were making uh, um, uh, beach uh, barrels uh, for uh, butter. Uh, oh, right. Export, okay. uh, so an export, uh, um, what do you say, export uh, packaging for uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. butter. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. and, and most of it uh, went to England. Oh, brilliant! Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah. The sizes yeah. were fifty kilos, and they were adapted for uh, the English market. Oh, what's um, what's yeah, easier? To, what, what's easier to work with, beech or oak? Uh, I, uh, good question. <laughs> 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 I, uh, I haven't done a, a, a. It's called a drittel from the uh, uh, German uh, one third. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah, it's so one third of a, of a butter barrel, so uh, fifty kilos. So um, I haven't done uh, one myself. Uh, the latest person making one uh, was uh, my grandfather. So, all right, okay. Uh, I think, yeah. So obviously, with with, with like the invention of um, I don't know, probably less uh, less arduous, or sorry. More arduous packaging, like less less works have to go into the packaging uh, with the uh, you know with like plastic and, uh, and yeah. things like that. It's yeah. become easier. To, so I so that making butter barrels now is pretty pretty a dead thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Interesting. Brilliant. Yeah. Hmm? That's really good. No, thanks a lot for that. Uh, it's always uh, we always like to get people on it and, and see the history of things and that as well. It's really interesting. Um, so I suppose the the biggest question we're going to have tonight really is David. Uh, how do you make a cask? What is the process? Uh, there are many steps. Uh, step number one is that we uh, um, we get the, the oak wood from our friends at uh, Nyhams uh, Sog och Dot uh, I can translate it if you want. Uh, yeah, that'd be really cool. <laughs> yeah, uh, I was I was looking forward to be, it. Yeah, no, no, Nyham, that'll be Newport. And uh, Newport sawmill and uh, boat building. Ah, oh, right, brilliant. Yeah, that's the straight translation of the 
company days. name. Yeah, uh, two great guys, uh, brothers, uh, Mart Mart Martin and Matthias, um, providing us with the the oak we need. Uh, and I think it's the, the the highest quality Swedish oak you can get hold of. Uh, I haven't seen anything. Uh, uh, any, anything better than than what they can provide so uh, that's that's really nice um, that's the first step we get the uh, the oak planks from from them and uh, we cut them in uh, pieces stave to staves and uh, put them put them on pallets with uh, space between uh, leave them out to dry uh, for uh, two years at least, uh, two, two weather years, uh, two summers. Uh, uh, and when that's done, we take them in and we plane them, uh, make them concave on one side and uh, convex on the other. Uh, then we have, uh, we cut the pieces to the right length. Uh, right. And, and in every step we, we discard uh, the pieces that uh, isn't uh, uh, good enough. So you, you really have to have the, the right eye to, to see uh, uh, what piece uh, uh, isn't good enough. So is that all to do with like um, knots in uh, lines and stuff like that? So if there's too many in a particular area, you have to discard it because it'd be too leaky and things like that? Yeah, we don't accept uh, in not not any knots uh, uh, at all, um, and the, the wood has to be straight, uh, totally straight. So, um, but uh, the, the oak is so the, the oak is so fine when we get it. So we don't uh, discard uh, uh, not really so much. But uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, there is um, you. You need to check every piece. So uh, right. that's, yeah, that's yeah, a lot. Sure. With, yeah, you can't put anyone to, uh, to, sh to, to do that job. You have to know uh, exactly what you're looking for. So uh, that's, a, that's a big piece of the... Yeah. And actually, that, you know, that, you've been fifth generation. Yeah. You know, your, your great-great-grandfather that has passed the, this information down and so on and so on. And, you know, your years of doing it and stuff, you know, it takes a proper trained eye, doesn't it? Yeah, it does, really, yeah. It takes uh, a lot of years to to understand what you what you need, uh, and you you have to know every step of the way to to know what uh, to to yeah, look yeah. for. Yeah, you know how to build a barrel, then yeah. you can go back and uh, and and, and uh, choose the right material and so on. So, uh, yeah, awesome. Yeah, uh, I have to look at my. So I think we're up to step five. Where are we? Yeah, okay, step five, yeah. Uh, yeah, we mount all the staves in uh, what we call a starting hoop. Uh, so we rise them uh, till we get the, the, the shape of a cask, uh, yep. a round shape. Uh, the cask is then heated, uh, and, we, and then we bend it to, to shape it, and that's the the real craftsmanships begin uh, at this this step. You can, yeah. Uh, uh, it's heated, and we uh, add water to so you get it easier to bend. Yeah, yeah. And uh, yeah. Next step is uh, we put temporary hoops on the uh, on the casks, uh, uh, and then we let them uh, we let them cool down. Uh, we tighten we tighten the hoops as much as we can. They must always, in every step of the way, they need to be tight. You can't let uh, air get between the staves uh, because okay. it will dry dry out the wood too much. Right. So you can get cracks between staves. That's not not good at all. Not when you're going to put whiskey in there, no. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> Maybe butter, but uh, unless yeah, you're yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the next step is uh, uh, charring. Yeah, that's the most uh, fun step. I the think. fun bit. Uh, yeah. Everybody, lo uh, everybody loves a good fire. So. <laughs> oh yes. Uh, yeah. That's uh, that proper problem human thinking about in us, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, I mean? it is. yeah. Fire. But, yeah. <laughs> but in a controlled manner, of course. Yeah. Uh, 
Well, I think David, I've um, I've been using a, a, a picture of you um, holding a, a cask on fire in, in some of the tastings that I do. So we do tastings on on Zoom or on Teams, and um, that has, that's the one I enjoy showing people the most. Yeah, this this one. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Literally yeah. the manliest photo in whiskey. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I mean, it's just uh, <laughs> a fantastic picture. Um, so how, how long, how, how do you set fire um, to it? What, what do you do? Do you um, chuck a match inside and hope it goes up or? No, we put, uh, we put, we, we place the cask on, uh, on our firing place. Uh, uh, and we use, uh, we use the discarded uh, material for uh, uh, lighting the, the, the barrels. And I really like that. Uh, that we use the same material uh, uh, that we build the barrels of to 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 light up the barrels. Right. Uh, it, it it gives a good feeling that you use the same material uh, uh, to light up the barrels. So, uh, so we do that, and we uh, put uh, we let it burn for uh, uh, twenty seconds. And then we put it out water okay. and uh, yeah nice a, ni yeah. a nice step uh, next step is uh, we make uh, the uh, grooves yeah the grooves uh, where are we Grooving. yeah yeah we mill a groove so we can attach the lids uh, oh, okay in, onto the barrel yeah um, and each lid uh, is is measured, so it fits uh, uh, only only one cask. Uh, you have to measure every lid, so so it, uh, you have a perfect fit every time. Okay, that's, so that's, you can't that's very... You can't just make ten lids um, ready and then, no. and then put them on. You have to do it. Um, per, you have to do it tailored to each cask because they could be. Yeah small differences each you, time and that's interesting you, yeah you could get lucky but we don't take chances <laughs> <laughs> it's better to measure them every time yeah well, i think when um uh, before standardization um came in i think the the french uh, I, I don't know which louis it was in france but about 300 years ago when they were making muskets um there used to be people as a huge industry of people that would um their job would be to get part a uh, and part b and then just try and fit each part yeah. in to the first yeah. but because there was no exact measurement of anything yeah. they were just yeah. they were mostly okay so someone would sit with a one piece in their hand yeah. and try and find the perfect thing <laughs> and then be there for ages and then when standardization came in and you know millimeters and measurement came in properly and it was standardized across france um lots of people were out of work because all of a sudden there was you know there was precision in their things yeah. but um, you know, sad for them, of course, but um, a natural part of, of progression. But that is interesting, and that's that's nice to hear. Although it sounds like harder work for you, having to do it, you know, separately each time. I think that adds to the romance of yeah. making yeah, yeah, absolutely, it does. But it's not. You can make it uh, 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 pretty fast anyway. So uh, uh, I think. When you're a okay. generation. Pardon? A fifth, a, fifth, a fifth generation. Yeah, 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 yeah. Can do it, yeah. I've done it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Not perfect. Um, uh, so what yeah. step are we on then? Yeah. Step, step 11. eleven. Yeah. Uh, okay, you have the lids, and uh, then we, uh, we 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 sand the outside uh, uh, for to two different reasons. Uh, because it, it looks nicer, of course, and uh, <laughs> uh, you get uh, you get uh, the pores, or uh, you're closing the pores a little, little. Uh, so that's uh, 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 good for the angels' share as well. Uh, no, not good for them. It's not, it's not good. I was going to say it's no, not no, good no. with depriving the, <laughs> them of their liquid. Yeah, with depriving yeah. the them of their liquid. Uh, yeah. Um, and we switch to the permanent hoops, uh, uh, and we, we we drive them to place with. Uh, we use a sledgehammer, and uh, we call it uh, a drive ring. We say in Swedish, uh, that's a hoop driver. Uh, 
Yeah. Okay. So we have uh, we have a lot of uh, own words for uh, tools and uh, and uh, and uh, casks uh, and stuff. Uh, probably impossible to to translate, but uh, and I don't know if. Uh, Sometimes I don't think anyone else in in, in Sweden have heard uh, uh, some of the names because it's, well, I mean that's uh, the thing, isn't it? Because you said you know you talk to people and they they you know you have to repeat yourself when you when you describe your profession, yeah, uh, because it is you know you are one of very very few people uh, in in Sweden doing your job. So if that's hard enough to explain. You could probably forget about trying to explain the tools in that. Time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. probably. But people are interested. Uh, we have yeah. a little. We have a little shop at the uh, uh, at a workshop. So, um, and we have uh, some clients coming, and they're always interested in the craft. So I think that's that's uh, that feels really good. It's really nice. Uh, that, uh, I, I really all, enjoy. It. I really enjoy going to whiskey festivals, uh, and they have a Cooper demonstration on. Uh, I, I I I stand there with, with my drum for for ages, just watching watching him build it up, break it down. You think, oh, that's that's enough. You go, no, no. I will go quickly get get it back again, and I'll, I'll watch him do it about three or four times. And I'm like, yeah, this is awesome. Right, yeah. I better go and see some other people on the whiskey. You know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Is there something nice about making something out of nothing? So I think you know, just all all up you know, by hand, putting that together, as you've said. What about the the finishing touches? Anything else happens after sort of sanding down? Sanding down. No, uh, just uh, uh, we we yeah we we put uh, varnish on the lids and then we uh, inspect the barrel, uh, check that it's one hundred percent, and then it's done. Yeah. Pretty much. Nice. Sounds good. I think uh, that's something Mickey and I, if we can get ourselves over to Sweden, if we could ever have a spend some time with you, maybe, and you can, you can, oh, yes. you can well, teach us today. I think <laughs> we'll make a point of it, Rich. We will definitely make a point of it when we, when we yeah. finally, you know, when uh, when the pandemic restrictions allow and yeah. we can get ourselves over to HQ, then we'll definitely be paying a visit, David. I'm yeah, lucky. Sure. You're welcome. Yeah. <laughs> I just, I love the, um, uh, when I first learned about how, um, how, how how the wood is is warped or, or not warped, sorry, you know, because you're you're trying to to, warp it, to to shape it. Yeah, it's better mm -hmm. by um, heating it and adding water to it, and then you know heating it in water just to moisten it to allow some movement in there. I guess you know sort of uh, something being so brittle and a bit more malleable, maybe you know a bit you know, but you can play with it a bit more. Yeah, I think yeah. It's, it's so simple, but something that I'd never considered before. I'd never thought, you know, how do you do it? I just I thought that maybe somebody just cut them in that bend. Um, <laughs> yeah, well, you could do that. It's, no, it's a funny you, thing, but like I you did. Could do that. You could do that as well, but uh, it's all about yield. You know, you need, uh, saving, uh -huh, yeah. saving as much wood as possible. For, it, it, it's quite expensive. Uh, so you need to take, take uh, use everything you can, uh, really. <laughs> Uh, imagine if you, if, you were to, if you were to do that and shape it like you were suggesting there, Rich. You know, we saw the picture of, of the planks. We can see it in the background there. Yeah. Imagine how much more thicker they they would need to be. Do you know yeah, what I mean? so that's yeah. going to be like that's yeah. going to be like a lot more longer drying time and stuff like that as well. Won't true, it? Yeah. true. Yeah. Well, I'm thinking um, if you did have a big block of wood and you cut it into a curve, you could just make um, you know like a, a Russian nesting doll. So like yeah. each, each one was, was smaller and smaller. <laughs> be... I'm getting a business idea. Yeah, that's how <laughs> but it would. But it would take if it takes these beams. We can see behind us. You know, two. You know, two summers. Two. You know, two years. Two seasonal years to air dry. Um, how long it would take, as you said, Mick, for a big bit it would just be you know a lot. Yeah, a, a, a lot longer. Yeah. I think the air drying thing is something that's quite an important part of it as well you know not uh, lots of people kiln dry as i'm sure you know and it, it dries you know overnight or however quickly it is but very quickly you know um and that where you lock in lots of um or the tannins and you know some of the the harsher more bitter notes and with swedish oak with how powerful the influence is from there and, yeah. and even yeah. with you know we, we've talked about the you know the, the bitter darker notes perhaps like that, you know ginger and sandalwood etc you can get from it um the, 
but only from 10%, 10% of this, this whiskey anyway, has been in Swedish oak. And if that Swedish oak had been kiln dried in a day, this would need to be, you know, I don't know, 2%, you know, be in there because of how much character it would, it would have to give. So the well, patience, yeah. the patience involved in it as well, having to wait that long for the wood, it takes, you know, just so long from tree yeah. to Yeah, you need to, you need to have a plan. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely, yeah. Yeah. Right, so what's your, what's your favorite part of it then, David? I, I know, you know, we, we said about setting the casks on fire is probably what you're going to say, but what's your, you know, most enjoyable thing? Well, I think uh, the mounting of the staves uh, and the bending, uh, except from uh, uh, the charring, of course, but uh, when you have, when you're finished with, with the cask uh, when you have bent it uh, and you're putting the hoops on and you can see what you have done uh, you have taken a pile of oak yeah and put it into a, a cask that's i think that's hey, great that's fantastic yeah, definitely yeah, well, i really i really love that part the, i mean the craftsmanship in that that uh, that's what i love about about guys that have got proper like hands-on trades like yourself david is hmm. you know you've literally taken posh scaffolding boards really and turned it into an actual piece of art do you know what i mean a usable piece of art there you go very handsome <laughs> and um you know you look at that and you go I mean, you've just taken that right and you've just made this that is so cool that is so cool and for that to be your favorite part of it as well can you do that every day you know um but it's it's, it's nice to see that you can still look at a plank and go i'm going to turn that into that cask yeah. and you look at that cask and go yeah that's still pretty cool so to still be able to do that you know what i mean uh, after all these years uh, and generations is it's phenomenal quite frankly so you know we've been talking about the flames um so just to let the just to let all you guys out there know uh the casks used in macmira have the second highest level uh, of char uh, it goes from like one to five we use like number four uh, so uh, that gives them the highest level of charm with the crocodile skin, uh, what we call the crocodile skin being visible on the cask, but not all the way through. So not 100% coverage. Uh, at, at the high levels of, of, of the charring, the cracks that form and give rise to the crocodile skin uh, effect cause the whiskey to permeate more easily into the oak cask. Uh, and the different levels of charring have different chemical effects uh, that ultimately produce the, the, the different flavor profiles. So high levels of charring also result in the present caramelized uh, vanilla tones uh, that we like uh, that we like in the whiskey uh, so, so david how, how is this achieved how do you fire the cask uh yeah we we, we put the, the the cask on uh, on our fireplace uh, and uh, light it up uh, as i said with the uh, with the discarded uh, wood uh, we light it up and uh, we let it burn for 20 seconds uh, and then we just put it out. Uh, yeah, hmm. pretty much. Very easy. And how, how many um, how many can you do you burn in a in a day? Do you make um, the cask or half make the casks and, and line them up or do you do everything one cask at no. a time? It's uh, with your measurements. It's uh, with your UK measurements. I think it's uh, it's not uh, uh, it's not so many at the time. Uh, we have a batch that we do. Uh, then we do we do them all uh, in one time. Uh, so we do every step, everything with every step, uh, uh, all casks in uh, with every step. If you see what I mean. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 Uh, because we don't have, like many industries uh, in UK, for example, uh, uh, you put in uh, the logs in one end and then you spit out uh, barrels in the other end. Uh, it, it, it's not really like that uh, because we are quite small and uh, yeah, we, we don't make uh, uh, so many uh, a year. So uh, right, okay. yeah, make, small batches. Make yeah made with care and love and uh yeah good absolutely yeah um so, um anyone watching um at home that, that's with us uh, feel free to comment and let us know perhaps what your uh the favorite thing you've ever made you know out of wood might be if even if you have to think all the way back to school i think the favorite thing mickey owns out of wood is either his shelf behind him or the 
the, gla- the glass he's drinking from now. Um, <laughs> my my cousin, um, my cousin from from Scotland. He's a he's a boat builder now. Um, he's living in in Canada doing it. Um, but he, uh, I used to go up and, and stay with him every year on the Isle of Mull. And um, every year I'd come back and he'd have something else that he'd made, like an intricate box where you couldn't see any hinges or, you know, everything was just perfectly put together. And I was always, um, I would say impressed, but what I really mean is is jealous, I guess. <laughs> um, but how, how long does it take you to, to make a, a cask? You know, you said it takes, you know, love and care and you know, one at a time and, you know, you're making things um, at your pace, but... How long does it take from start to finish? Yeah, it's uh, about five hours. Uh, wow. Okay. Hours that, that's, that's, yeah, that's, if you count uh, yeah. count it all, it's it's five hours uh, approximately. Yeah. Okay. Hours is, that, that's quite a long time. That. So. Yeah, it is. Yeah, as I so, as I said, it's it's not uh, it's not that kind of industry that you. So, yeah. uh, our, our main tech guy on the background and uh, and a face we see occasionally, Carl. Uh, he's he's got another business that he makes. Um, he repurposes uh, wooden things as well and, and makes uh, and makes uh, a lot of benches and all that t- sort of good stuff. Uh, he's 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 done some some really really cool stuff. So so Carl Carl, Carl feels your pain. He, he knows how long it takes to deal with your wood. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so uh, so what's the biggest challenge you face when when making the casks, and David? Uh, the biggest challenge is to get, uh, I think, get hold of uh, enough oak uh, of the right quality. Yeah, uh, you can get oak, but it's often uh, not uh, not good quality. Uh, uh, there's a lot of lot of oak, but it needs to be um, straight without knots. That's the, that's a big uh, problem. Uh, the oak uh, hasn't been taken care of uh, uh, the last, uh, I don't know, 100 years, 150. So uh, that, that's that's uh, that's a big issue. Hmm. That's why you got a lot of time walking around the the forests for the the, the gentleman you spoke about earlier, yeah. marking trees, looking at trees and sizing yeah. them up, the right sort yes. of thing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's, it's care and consideration from the very beginning, and you don't want to fell a, a tree that is going to have you know, you know, little use or not for the the purpose that you're after, I suppose. So um, a lot of care from the beginning. So we talked about tradition, uh, traditional tools and things that you use that um, that you, hard to translate into English or even to describe to another Swedish person, but. Uh, are there any um, you know, more advanced tools that you use? Any sort of, you know more modern technology at all? Yeah, uh, that's uh, also a thing that I like very much. Uh, I'm I'm technic- technically I'm interested in machines and the cars and uh, everything that moves. So uh, the combination of uh, uh, the latest technology we have a CNC machine, for example. Uh, um, and uh, the combination with that, uh, with that machine, with the old uh, craftsmanship, uh, that's uh, it's. I think it's amazing, really. And yeah. How, how much longer would it take you? You know, you said it takes five hours to make a cask. Now, if you didn't have a, a CNC cutter and things, how long would it take you to make you know one cask? I don't know. Uh, but cutting the staves by hand, uh, that takes uh, that takes a long time. Yeah. Right. So you think about like your great granddad doing it. Yeah. You know, how, how how long would it taken him to you know like because you wouldn't have even had a bench saw back then either. It literally would have been all all hand saw, wouldn't it? Probably, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Wow, I mean that that's fantastic. So you know we're we're a whiskey company. You make our whiskey uh, our whiskey casks. Uh, do you drink whiskey yourself, David? Yeah, it happens. Does awesome. So, uh, so what? What? What's your? What? what you know, it doesn't have to be a Mac Miro one. Uh, what? What is your? What is your favourite whiskey? Well, I like the smoky ones, and um, there are a lot of uh, smoky ones to choose from. So, uh, I, I have a few, um, like uh, Outback or yeah, uh, nice, yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, I've got, yeah, I've got yeah, a few yeah. of them myself. Yeah, I, I, me, 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 both me and Rich. So Rich mentioned Mull earlier. He's got a family on Mull, so obviously you know there's only one distillery on Mull, and that's uh, that's Tobermory. Uh, me and both me and Rich are big fans of uh, the, the smoky variety. So Lechik uh, is is phenomenal for us. No. Um, but no, so um, well, we're, I think we've all got a wee dram of uh, Svensk uh, even yourself, eh, David. So you know, uh, what what is your favourite Macmira dram? Oh, that's. Uh, uh, I like uh, well. I like uh, svensk ek. Uh, I do, uh, and uh, I haven't tried them all, so I I can't really. Uh, we'll, have to, uh, we'll have to speak to the we'll have to speak to the guys in charge of it. Yeah, I know, you, like, I know. Get you, yeah, up, get, yeah. You, get you up for a day and take you take you out and taste in bottle well, or something. They always uh, they're always on me. Uh, they want. I haven't bought a uh, bought a, uh, a cask yet, so they're always uh, nagging ah, about that. You know, definitely. Well, yeah. You, well, you need one, don't you? Do you know what yeah. I mean? Or you just say, just say to them, just just give me down some new mixed spirit, and I'll put it in down here. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. When I'm freshly made the cask or whatever. Yeah, perfect. <laughs> make your own one. Perfect. I think it's interesting, um, uh, and doesn't surprise me that you like smoky whiskey because if your favourite part. Of the job, or, or yeah. one of them is 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 burning the casks. Obviously, you know the yeah. smell. Once you put the what, once you put the fire out, the smell that will linger there as well. And, and even while you're burning it, um, I guess maybe yeah, it just uh, takes you back to a time and a place every time you smell that that smoky tram. I will yeah. point out, Mickey mentioned Lechig. Um, Carl, our, our colleague in the background, another brand ambassador of ours, is a big Lechig fan as well. And he was on Mo, I think, um, September last year. So we're all big, big smoky fans. That's for in, sure. in, his, in his big camper van that he outfitted himself with all his wood. <laughs> uh, so, no, so, so this one, I, you know, was going about the like the, the flavour profiles and stuff like that. So obviously, you know, uh, as we know from previous shows we've we've done on Swedish oak uh, for for Svenski, you know, we we know that um, sw uh, Swedish oak has a lot less wood sugars uh, in it, so. Um, you know, and, and it does give rise to the more the more peppery stuff in that. Do you know what I mean? Um, do, do, have you done? Do you do a lot of stuff with any American oak, David? Uh, no, we haven't made. Uh, I, I've I've thought about it, but uh, we haven't made uh, that yet. Uh, It'd be interesting no. to see what what the differences are yeah, in, yeah. In, in working with it as opposed to you know. Yeah, well, we know yeah. we know what the flavour profiles give uh, from from a whiskey sense. Do you know what I mean? Um, so it'd be interesting to know what it's like. You know, uh, the differences in in working with it as well. You know, yeah. I think that'd be really cool. Imagine there'll be there'll be differences in it because of how you know um, uh, different densities in the wood. You know, the it's all. I, I'm no expert. David George, obviously, the expert, but I would guess that. You know, a, a, a different trees, even if it's oak, you know, if it's from a different place and it's a different sort of yeah. variant of that oak, it's going to be different to work with for sure. Yeah. Um, so European uh, European oak compared to American oak must be um, different, but I don't know whether... Yeah, it, it is. Other. We haven't worked with uh, American oak for flasks, but uh, we have worked with American oak and uh, that's, a, that's a big difference uh, in working with it. Uh, I can't explain it, but uh, it's uh, you notice the difference. Uh, yeah, we, yeah, yeah. Uh, we 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 really prefer uh, Swedish oak to work with. Uh, okay, uh, not not that you're biased or anything. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Keep it Swedish. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Brilliant. Mm. Brilliant. So uh, our, our friend Bully there this evening, he's got a, he's got a electric Rioja cask. Uh, oh, it is yeah. on the go tonight, um, but I feel a bit hurt that you're watching us at Mac Mirror show and you're having a and you're having electric. Do you know what I mean? What, what what's up with that, my man? Do you know what I mean? I know, and I know you've got Mac Mirror in the house as well. So consider yourself towed <laughs> off for that. <laughs> so that's either um, that's either the the new Sinclair um, no age yes, statement or it the, be, the, the exclusive Rioja cast. There was a 15 year old a few years ago that I bought with my partner Heather when we were up there. That was one of the. I think electric and, and wine in general goes very well. We had um, uh, Andy Watts of of Distel, who are the mm. the company that own electric, joined us last week as a guest. So uh, we're, um, we're we were very happy to have him on. I think you've been a, a, a brilliant guest, David. By the way, no, Mickey and I um, before the show we were talking quite a lot about oh, what do we want to ask him because um, 
you know we we know about whiskey you know i'd like to think we do we're always learning of course um <laughs> mickey's face there <laughs> um, but the the cask the the coopering side of it you know i think um i have to confess i i know how to talk about it a little bit you know i, I can say some things and state some facts but um i know mickey and i were very much looking forward to having you here so that you could tell us things from a first person point of view because um to this point i think i've, I've mostly you know just read read things and, and mm. talk talk to people i suppose that know things about it but no one who actually works and you know makes money being a cooper and um you know sort of earns their keep so it's just been very very interesting for, for both of us i think so thank yeah. you definitely thank you. Our, our, pre our pressure tactic work there as well uh so so bully's going to go go on to the winter glut uh onto the winter glue so good man bully good man <laughs> Fantastic, fantastic. No, I think that's uh, I think that's about all we've got for the all all we have for this evening. Uh, David, honestly, uh, like, like Richard said, I can only echo what he said. It's been an absolute pleasure to have you on, sir. Thank you very much for taking time out of your busy schedule. Uh, no problem. To, Thank you to, to come and educate us more on uh, on our cast. That's absolutely fantastic, my man. Mm. Uh, so, Rich, what have we got in store for the rest of the month? Uh, well, I think the rest of the month, I think we've got a busy next couple of weeks um you and i think the next three things we have um tomorrow night we've got uh one of our monthly tastings we're doing core range and our, our gruntate if i've said that correctly david now that we can't see you, you can laugh away um our green, <laughs> tea, our green tea whiskey um and we're joined as we can see here by the the wonderful no nonsense whiskey from vin um uh, a, a good reason we've got him coming on as well we'll leave that as a surprise um for the evening but that's tomorrow at seven o'clock um, so if you have a pack or you don't have a pack, feel free to join us and um, learn a little bit about, um, you know, about Macmere in a bit more detail and uh, and Vin and his channel. Um, on Friday, the 22nd, so two days from now, uh, we have the return of the Macmere Inn. So uh, Mickey and I have had a, a break for uh, for the last few weeks from this after Christmas or from before Christmas. Sorry. Uh, we're being joined by Jess Lomas, who you can see here, enjoying a nice dram. Um, uh, the uh, uh, Mickey, her, her type global sales manager for Glo single Glo yeah, Glo global sales manager for single cast nation. That's it. Yeah, we, um, uh, an American um, uh, bottling company, independent bottling company, um, a, a, a company I'll say that I've been very interested in since uh, sort of the start of this year. They have a, a podcast called One Nation Under Whiskey. Other podcasts are available. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge, Mick. Um, Mick I believe there's one called the Quake Podcast, Rich, which is supposed <laughs> to be really, really good. Um, Quake. Quick plug there for Mick. Um, no, I'm just, 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 I've just heard good things about it, Mick. That's all. Just heard good things. <laughs> but Jess, Jess will be joining us. Um, I'm, I'm Mickey. Mickey and Jess have been friends for some time, but I'm very much looking forward to meeting her and uh, and having a chat. The Mac Mirror in David is just we get together, we have uh, a few drams with a guest and uh, enjoy, in, I don't know, enjoy some whiskey chat. Um, and then on Monday, the 25th, we are joined uh, again by um, by Mur Nielsen. Nielsen, sorry. Um, a Swedish whiskey girl. People will know her from um, her social media and, and her YouTube channel. Uh, if uh, people may have, have joined us a few weeks ago, I know that David did because we're having a laugh about it <laughs> before we began the show tonight. And uh, David was having a laugh at the time. Yeah. Well. Um, but but Moa joined us to um, talk about uh, well, well, talk about actually just sort of educate us in Swedish pronunciation. Um, so yeah, looking forward to having Moa back, and we'll be doing a Swedish twist. On uh, on Burns nights and um, Mick's put a lot of work into into this as well. So everyone everyone better tune in and um, make it's it been epic. Out. It's been yeah. epic. As he has, Mick has Mick has done a great deal of work for it. So oh here we go, Jess. Uh, hello, Jess. Um, but yeah, please join please join us on uh, yeah, Monday the twenty fifth and that's seven o'clock again, Mick, I believe. Uh, on the twenty fifth, yes, yeah, seven o'clock. That's it. And I think that's it. I think those three things will do as an update for now. But we have got. Um, we've got a calendar sort of filled up for the next sort of six to eight weeks, I think. Now um, we've got some busy times, some busy times, Rich. It's good, um, but that's it. Yeah, that's 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 updates from us for what we've got coming. Yeah, up. perfect. David, any uh, any parting notes from yourself? You wanna? Have you got anything um, exciting coming out of uh, out, out of the cooperage? Apart from our fantastic casks, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> no, we uh, we just uh, there's a lot of th there's a lot of things to do. So. Uh, uh nothing uh, nothing special we keep on 
uh, working. So yeah. I think you do yourself a disservice there, sir. Everything, all the casks you produce are, are definitely something special, uh, as, and as the whiskey can attest to. So thank you very much uh, thank you. for that, my good sir. Uh, and gentlemen, uh, there you go. The, honestly, the manliest picture in whiskey ever. <laughs> David, I'm going to have to get something like that done on a canvas and get you to sign it for me. I'm going to hang that up. Uh, I'll hang that above my whiskey shelves. Yeah, sure. Absolutely. No problem. <laughs> Fantastic. I lo- See, I love things like that. Honestly, I love things like that. So, uh, I, your face onto his, his body, Mick, and just have it pretend. I, I, I don't think I could pull that <laughs> amount of manliness off, Rich. I, I, I like the gesture, and I was thinking about it, but then I'm thinking, I don't think I could pull that off, to be honest. <laughs> I don't I don't have that picture myself. I really want it. But, yeah. Oh, we'll, get, we'll, get, uh, yeah. we'll, we'll, we'll get that organized for you, David. We'll get that organized for you. Definitely. Uh, so I think that just leaves us all to uh, say good night. Thank you very much for joining us, ladies and gentlemen. And Shko. 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 Shko.